<laughs> Jared Anderson, let's talk about Big Baby, man. All right. Do, what do you want to talk about, though? Do you want to talk about just the emotional video that's gone viral with him and Ray Jones? Do you want to start there, or do you, where do you want to go with this? I say we start there. I say, no, you Is know what? Is that a good place to start, or no? No, let's start on the fight. Let's start, let's on, the start fight. on the fight. So he's cool. come through the, the, the Charles Martin battle, and um, it really was a battle. I know people are saying, oh, he didn't lose a round, but it's one of those things where coming into this fight, there was a lot of talk. He should have basically, by public opinion, walked through Charles Martin. Absolutely. Anyone that's saying that he shouldn't have done that is lying. Again, you have to just be honest with yourself and say, in this moment, I'm a liar. Mm. Because we expected, I turned up to that fight saying, I know how this wants to go. I've I've listened to Charles Martin talk, yeah? And, you know, obviously, wants to fight five guys in one night. I've seen him like, not really hate, try to step up to the mountain and not do well. Mm. Not, not be the guy that we're expecting. So then what I'm hoping for is, not saying a cherry pick, but I'm looking for certain fights. Keep blowing them out. Again, it's a champion. Look how I dispatch this champion. Yeah. It's part of the evolution prospect of building up a big fighter, building up a guy that's bums on seat is the name. And what happened is we just was, we went off peace. Mm-hmm. And we just have to be honest and answer that and say, there's a reason. Because I not like I want to skip to the end of the fight, but yeah. him, his mum consoling him, he understands what that night was. And you can say, ah, oh, it's just a thingy of emotion. No, I went home for a homegoing and I, um, a homecoming. And I wanted everyone to be like, wow. And what they got was, okay, he's good. He's yeah. done it. Look, he's made himself. He's taken himself out of this opportunity. Yeah, he's taken himself out of this this environment. Thing but is, yeah. it wasn't enough. It wasn't a message. Wasn't sent. Yeah, I mean, think, let's go back to last week, right? Mm-hmm. Last week we had an argument in here. Yeah, it was a very passionate one after the pod. Yeah, and you were basically saying how much you rate Jared Anderson and how yep. Jared Anderson is up next. Yep. And what did I say? I said three years, though. That's a very important three years time. Cool. Very important for me. I said I don't see him higher. Mm-hmm. Than a certain level in this, than you in did. the UK. Yeah, I was talking about the Dubois, the Wardleys, you know, cut just about the cusp. underneath Joe Joyce. Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm like, that's where I got him. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that his ceiling is naturally much higher because the heavyweight division has evolved in terms of what heavyweights look like. Yeah, Usyk is an anomaly. Yes, he doesn't fall into that thing, but he's, you know, his skills allow him to exist in this space. Yeah, but the guys are getting bigger. Yeah. Six four doesn't look big. No, Lennox Lewis was six five, for scale. Yeah, look at these up. They're they're getting bigger, and there's certain things that these guys are going to start being able to do. It's just human evolution. Look mm-hmm. at when Manyama, the NBA player, seven foot four, Manyama, agile, yeah. shoots threes. It's different now today. The body, is, <laughs> it, we're evolving. I like where you're going with this. So part. I look at Jared Anderson, and I'm like, your body type. I don't see you being a banger at this in this heavyweight world that we're in right now, and mm-hmm. causing issues. Mm. I see a younger. Dillian White. I don't have a super what, like high the ceiling. the Tormans and stuff that comes like, because the Tormans is... You see, but this is what I'm saying. So with him, with him now, his skill set and his fighting style lends into the fact that he's that side. He's, he's, he's what, Southpaw, mm-hmm. moves quite well, does a lot of different things. With Anderson, it's a lot, it's ploddy. I'm a banger. I, I'm go to this. You go up against a bigger banger. It mm. tends to be what cancels out the banger. Do you see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Whereas if somebody's skill set is a lot higher... I'm not relying on size to that degree. I am big, but I'm not a uh, size. Is and not this the- is the point that I wanted to bring to you just now, because you you mentioned that thing about just um, someone being, you know, the size and this, that, and the other, and them getting bigger. But the problem is, while these guys are getting bigger, the skills are uh, dwindling. That's right. Their head movement is not the same. It's the, there's moments where you're co- catching fighters square-footed, um, flat-footed, just square. He got like, square like Just times. horrid, you know what I mean? You're looking at little moments and saying, okay, well, we're tr- we're, we want to progress you. We want to say you're next and everyone should get in line and everyone should be scared. Mm. And then wh- what, it's, what it says is chinks in the armor because some work is not being done and the man them are not fighting enough. When you say like there's there's guys that I like him, so this is not to throw him out because I still believe that three years time he could be running it. Mm. I still I, I don't feel like I, but before we was talking about him being on the on the fast track. You yeah. see how AJ was fast tracked. We said that he's on the fast track pro- project he's and he's not mm. because now it's like if I'm any of these other boxers and stuff, I'll be looking at him thinking, you know what? Actually, I'll take that fight if I'm Daniel Dubois. I'm saying, hey, I, I know I've got these issues and setbacks and stuff, but that fight is more interesting to me than it was before. 
You know what I mean? No, Dubois might be too far for me. Like I understand, I, I probably. Why, why wouldn't Fabio Woodley and all them? These guys are all warriors, Woodley, right? I'd say. Woodley, I'd say. Yeah, but they're not, all warriors. Not, not so du- Dubois, for some, I just don't think Dubois. Dubois' heart, his, his heart check for me is still is still debatable. Okay, but because I think that Anderson is too, Anderson's going to test whoever gets in there with him. Yes, it's just whether or not I see him coming out on top. Yeah, in that performance there, I saw a lot of holes. Now the good thing is he's twenty three, and this is the time to have holes to mm-hmm. fill. Do you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like. I think this might be a case of, you know, the Americans doing what the British do for a change where they overhype someone too early. Mm. And they've definitely done that with Anderson. Anderson's got to go back to the drawing board now and really tighten things up before he does take that step up. I know Aram said he get want to get him in with a top 10 fighter. I don't necessarily believe that's going to be the move. I think that's just a talk to say this is a vote of confidence of, you know, how well, we feel Well, Bob Aram wants to make money. You know, this is the thing. Bob Aram understands... It's heavyweight boxing, and let's be fair, there's a heavyweight that he has that's not boxing. So it's like, what I need to do now is need to find the next, you know, or need to need to tell people I have the next. Mm. And at the moment, there's it, what's good about heavyweight boxing is there, there, there's these guys that are like looking for the throne. There's heirs to the throne. Like there's a lot of like princes at this moment, yeah. right? And it's like, who will be king of this new era? And that's the hard part because there's no, there's, no, there's no real clear guy. You know, there's one that we can say, because we put the hype behind Jared. And then when it comes to it, he's saying, well, you should have knocked out Charles Martin. And the mm. funny thing is, had he got him out there in the second round, now it looked like it was going to go. We would have said, hey, that's the guy. But then we saw Charles Martin. He just grew into the fight. Grow into this fight. We saw him ask questions that he's never been asked before. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I saw some nice things. He's got a good little counter shot, but he also gets countered quite cons- <sighs> consistently. You know, things with guys like him, right? And I just like, I look at him, I think to myself, I, I, I'm, I'm a bit concerned that I think because I've seen the, the Roy Jones thing beforehand, mm. I'm like, mentally, I don't, I don't know how much he's there. When he's in the ring, you wouldn't question his, his commitment to the cause. Mm-hmm. But that video of him talking to Roy Jones, that was really alarming in my opinion. I'm surprised you say that. I say it's I'm surprised you say this. So go on, hit me with the why you find so it's alarming. Like you, you get the conversation where he's talking with Roy Jones about the pressure. Do you know what I mean? The pressure of not necessarily choosing this boxing life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Roy Jones like, listen, man, to who, you know, the, the, because you can handle you've it gifted, is why you've, you've been, been given gifts. gifts. Yeah. And he's like, the more you can handle, the more you've been given. It's your responsibility to, you know, take it on. And he's like, yeah, but I didn't choose this. Like, but the pressure's crazy. I'm only 23. Like, I understand these are very honest and transparent feelings, but it's one of those things where it's like, do you say, is he mentally prepared for this or if he's is he mentally capable to handle with what's to come because this is only a tip if you think about the pressure that he's talking about right Mm now let's imagine what aj's pressure looks like Mm. when you're you know the emergence of a great sport again like Mm. it's that thing and he's not necessarily got that pressure on his shoulders he's just got potential that he to live up to Mm. so it's like i look at i'm like i don't know if he can necessarily carry the mantle but what we have to understand is we are in a brand new generation and it's we're in a space where um we're taught to ask ourselves how we feel mentally to me even as a parent right Mm. my daughter does the mental health checks as she's feeling she gets to school and they say what what thingy are they and they're in these different colors yeah so you're in blue, green, yeah, there's like, I think there's four colors, right? Mm. Of how they're feeling. So mentally, it's those mental check-in health checks that we're doing more so now than we haven't done before. That's very in true. our generation, we very never ask ourselves, hey, stop for a second. Especially as how parents, are you? Especially as parents being able to look in the moments and see it, like just with my son today, yeah. right? So I've had to really look at certain things I do. So like my son's like, he, he panics a lot. If he makes a mistake, yeah. I've noticed that he panics. Like he'll drop something. And my reaction sometimes is like, oh, come on, man. Like he'll spill a drink or yeah. da, da, da. He drops the He dropped the fan today, right? It fell down. It didn't hurt. I rushed to see if he was okay. Yeah. And he was okay. But he was upset and emotional because mm. he thought I was going to be annoyed that the thing fell down. Yeah. And I was like, bro, this is in the long term. What this looks like is, a, is an anxiety to make decisions or to get things wrong uh-huh. and try new things. Yeah. So I was like, oh, as a parent, I've got to chill the hell out when it comes to reacting to simple things. And I just had to tell him to chill. And I said, what are you upset about? Because I know you're not hurt. Yeah. And he goes, I thought you was going to be upset at me because I dropped the thing. And I was like, yeah. long term, I'm going to give you anxiety and making, you know, going for something that might not work. And I'm like, 
in the game yeah. now thinking, okay, let's change the behavior because the outcome. But you see it. So now we're asking ourselves certain questions. So I watched that video and I was like, I saw power. Mm. You know what I mean? I watched the video and I say, well, that's honest. Again, you talk about kids that are like, he's so further ahead of where some men naturally are because that every man at some point has to look in the mirror and say, am I successful or am I a failure? Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. And he's asking himself in questions at 23 so and understanding true. what's coming. You know what I mean? Beautiful time to ask him and amazing to have the right mentor to tell you, to tell you hey, it's pressure, mm. but this is normal. That's real. You see what I'm saying? That, that's good because unfortunately, we've had to work out those things sometimes alone. So like, yeah. Alone. Like, and no one gets to tell you, hey, these feelings that you're feeling, da 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 da, is this. It makes sense. You know what I mean? So when I looked at it, I watched the video and I was like, it feels good because this is mentorship. This is what it's about. This is a lot because men don't talk, especially. Especially, and I don't want to make it racy, but in our community, mm. we solo, mm. so lone wolf. We think of all these things are propped up to be great. Especially telling someone that you are scared of the pressure. Yeah. That's something that won't yeah. come out. It's yeah. not, but then it's like, this is why you fight though. Because the flip side is, I get that, but this is why you do it. Mm. This is what this leads to. That stuff there it's empowering. is, it's is empowering. empowering. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't, with the, and don't get twisted because I think sometimes we can go a bit too far with mental yeah, health. that's the thing. I think we've got, we've, we've more decoddled us a bit too much as a community. Yeah. But little moments like that is done in the right way because he smiled, he laughed and he's like, okay, it's the refocusing and that's, oh, that is good. That's what we're talking about. I, I, I definitely hope you're right. I definitely hope you're right. It's just one of those things where for me, I was a bit concerned because I looked at it, I thought to myself, are you because this life is hard the fight yeah. a fighter's lifestyle is very difficult it is this is the beginning this is actually the easy part mm. so now it's like it's one of the ones where i do hope that this moment allowed you to feel you know empowered to go forward and continue to take this journey or it's a a, a flag to say i'm letting you know now yeah i don't want to do this but your gene you know, i get but as your brethren i get why you look at it this way okay because you're naturally you're like, and this is why I like how when we talk and stuff, you're naturally apex. Like you're naturally, you know what I'm saying? So mm. I'm not surprised when you said that mess with, thing with your son, you naturally see it boom, like mm. straight, you mm. know what I'm saying? Sharp, right? And it's like at times, and that's good because there's times when I'm saying, I need to be sharp as this guy. Mm. I need to hone in and see nothing else but the mm. the comp finish line. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you're doing what you're trained to do. Mm. However, there's it's like I'll be in the same seat and say, "What is everything getting on in this moment? Mm. What is this? What does that mean?" Do you mm. see what I'm saying? Mm. So mm. then, after it, it might be the route to the thing, you might even get there faster than I will. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And this is it's, it, the thing is taking the lessons from. So why you be straight apex and get to the top and win the whole take the whole division which is life and stuff it's it's saying yourself did i miss things along the way okay. was i on point you mm -hmm. see what i'm saying because all good in the journey but how yeah, so, yeah, yeah you see what i'm saying and it's i think for for everyone is to learn how to do where you're because i think that's my weakness i get distracted you see yeah, what i'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. and then after you could say rob yours could be I'm I'm missing. I won't. It. Yeah, I won't see the little <laughs> things along the way. Yeah, Mad. that's very true. Yeah. Mad. Yeah, you know I'm saying it's it's crazy though. But this is again. Mm. I think I think as humans and in, in terms of our mind and emotionally, we are evolving though. And yeah. I like as a fighter, I like this, and we're gonna keep seeing more of this because now fighters are finally saying I can still be. I'm still alpha with these thoughts. Mm. This is what's happening. I'm still at alpha. I think people have just got it mixed or like misunderstood, but vulnerability is powerful, fam. Yeah, no, I agree, man. I'm curious to see how US media is dealing with or mm. responding to it because mm. British media has a way of being incredibly strong-handed with certain people yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, we go back to AJ Usyk. <sighs> I wasn't supposed to be a fighter. I only yeah. started boxing because I was in jail. I'm heavy. People yeah. really went crazy about that. Mm -hmm. When reality, that was him saying like, tear down all of the things you've, think I think or whatever. I'm telling you, I wasn't even supposed to be here, yo. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I made it here like on a whim and you lot are being, you're treating me like I'm one of these men. Mm -hmm. These men been boxing since, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was a cry for, cry for humanity in that moment of defeat. 
But then look at where it has to have. You have to make have that cry in a safe space. And he had Roy Jones, and then AJ <laughs> done his one in front of the, after Usyk in in front of people that kind of yeah. don't like it at the same times as well, or waiting for the downfall. Because in in our thing, we love the underdog. But when the man gets too high, we just oh. we love that. It's just the UK way in it. It's not no disrespect, but it's just it what is we do. What it we, is. we 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 like the underdog more than we like the champ. Yeah, you know I what I mean. It. Unfortunately, it just is. I, I think it. it's a cultural thing. But then I will say, um, Giannis had a moment like this where yeah. he had. The, everyone keeps having. I said, Mem, it's best to have it's it true. at a young. It's best the top guys, the top guys that are going for things, they have these moments. And to, it's it's this era. Yeah, that's a good shout, man. Come on. Yo, people, thanks for watching the Undefeated Podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, leave a comment and all that good stuff, man. This is the place to be.